I'd like to first admit that I am in an absolutely atrocious position from having followed those three people. <laughs> and I admit it, and I radically accept it. That's it, that's it. I am the owner and co-founder of Family Dinner. Family Dinner is a local farmer's market delivery service. Each week, we source local meat, fish, cheese, produce, and grains, and deliver directly to our customers' homes. We work with over 100 local producers, growers, and makers to bring diverse and delicious shares to your home each week. The idea for Family Dinner started, like, as all good things do, in a sports bar, <laughs> eating wings and watching football with my husband, Tim. At the time, I was the assistant director of a data analytics lab at MIT within the Department of Urban Studies and Planning. And we, in between bites of like blue cheese and having buffalo sauce all over our faces, thought it would be cool to think about how you could use data and technology to radically transform the food system, eliminate the problem of food waste, and help address the problems of food insecurity in our communities. So we thought, maybe there's something here. Maybe there's an idea. Maybe there's a business. And so we decided boldly, passionately, like stupidly, to start this business. And we asked seven of our like, most patient, kind friends to allow us to beta test it. And so it started. And it grew bit by bit, week after week. And in 2019, we had the enormous honor of standing on the TEDx Natick stage, maybe in front of some of you, to share our story and our ideas. And what's happened since then has been an insanely tumultuous roller coaster of enormous highs and really disparaging lows that forced us to pivot over and over again and brought us to incredible growth. But before I get to the highs, let me start with the lows, because that's always really uplifting. <laughs> when the pandemic hit, our weekly orders skyrocketed. We went from doing 300 weekly orders to 700 in just 10 days. I think the pandemic really highlighted for people the importance of local food, knowing where your food comes from, believing that having the distance in between where it is grown and your plate be as short as possible. In addition to that, people were starting to hear stories and ideas and realities of food scarcity, and people were frightened. It was hard for us, and we had to put, we had to put a, a wait list into place that immediately had 900 folks in it. Think about that as a small business owner. 900 potential customers that you had to say no thank you to. And just a glimpse behind the curtain of what it looked like for family dinner before COVID, we would get together on a Saturday and pack our shares with 15 people, listening to terrible music and telling even worse jokes. <laughs> and after COVID, we couldn't have that. We couldn't have 15 people. We had six people packing 700 shares for nine hours before you even started to deliver them. It was really grueling, emotionally, physically, mentally, and we just couldn't keep up. This was at a time that co there wasn't a lot known about COVID, and people were particularly frightened about their food. You heard stories of people like wiping down their Cheerios with Clorox wipes, <laughs> or like leaving their food outside, because maybe that felt safe, whatever safe meant to each person. That fear and that insecurity really lived within us as well. I would wake up at 5 every morning to work, put on my overalls, and go sit outside on my front steps and cry. A lot. <laughs> and I hope, I hope that sharing that I'm not really a crier adds a little bit of a dose of pathetic <laughs> to the portrait of a grown woman in overalls crying on her front steps in the dark, because that's what it was. We were frightened. We didn't know what to do. It's true that this was an incredibly hard time, and we eventually decided to make the hard decision to close for three weeks. It was an enormously hard decision, and almost financially ruinous for us. But we did what we thought we had to do with the data that we had on hand at the time to keep our friends safe, our family safe, our team, and our customers safe. But it was terribly scary. I think that the pandemic was a real trial for all of us, all of us here. And what we all had to do was just wake up and put one foot in front of the other. We were incredibly lucky during this time to grow and experience scale and growth while so many others of our friends who ran bars and restaurants were closing. 
And while so many communities were facing unprecedented levels of food insecurity, especially communities that were, have an over-densification of people deemed essential. We thought that we were in a position to do something. We had to do something. So we committed ourselves as a small business to donating $3,000 a month in local food to food banks to help address this insecurity. And we would do this in a simple way. We tried to support the food bank and the local purveyors at the same time. We would, for example, buy 500 loaves of bread at retail from a bakery who had lost all their wholesale accounts and spin around and donate that directly to the Chelsea Collaborative to help folks who were fighting food insecurity in that moment. If you're not familiar with the Chelsea Collaborative, this is an extraordinary organization. They pivoted almost overnight from being a community center helping folks with legal issues to a food bank that was handing out food to thousands of people in need. We would pull up in my dusty old Toyota Tacoma full of local meat, veggies, or bread to see hundreds of people in line before the place even opened, queued up in the summer heat with the hopes of coming home with something and not going home with their families to nothing. We continue, we were able in that moment to be a conduit, both physical and financial for local suppliers and local producers and the local food banks. It wasn't much, it was a small act, but it was enough to stop me from sobbing in my overalls, which I really appreciated. These years of difficulty and intense work really forced us to squint to find the beautiful things, the bright spots. Maybe some of you felt that. And maybe you felt that sometimes you had to look real hard. And so I want to share with you three little glimmers of sunshine that popped up for us during this time. The first of which is that we opened a second location of family dinner. We have always believed that the systems, technologies, and methodologies that we have created are transferable across geographies and can serve a broader community than just Massachusetts. In 2021, we opened a location in Portland, Maine to serve the folks and the farmers of Maine and Seacoast, New Hampshire. We conned one of my closest friends, Joe, away from a fancy corporate job to run this. <laughs> we promised him all the riches and cushiness of a startup food business. <laughs> a joke is on Joe, for sure. <laughs> Maine is growing bit by bit, as is our friendship and respect for each other. The second little glimmer of sunshine is that we're really putting the family in family dinner. Tim and I somehow conned my mother. <laughs> Hi, Mom my best friend, the person I admire most in this world, to come and enjoy and, in, and be a part of this island of misfit toys that we run. <laughs> she made the mistake once during COVID of saying to me, do you need any help? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, so within minutes, she had a hoodie, a corporate email, was running accounts payable, receivable, and customer service. <laughs> my mother thought I had lost my damn mind when I left MIT to drive lettuce around. <laughs> She's not wrong, <laughs> not at all. But it is such a great joy to run this company and watch it thrive with her. And so in closing, I really want to thank everybody from the TEDx community for these opportunities to share with you what we've created, what we believe in, and the mission that we have here. Thanks to all of your incredible hard work, our talk was picked up by the main TED page. And we were allowed to go through this kind of rigorous process where they combed through every word and every fact and every image to make sure we weren't lying about too much, and we weren't. <laughs> Not that much. <laughs> but that talk has since been viewed by 1.8 million people around the world. <laughs> Not all of which, I don't think, can be attributed to my aforementioned mother. When the talk came out, we were flooded from emails from folks all around the world, India and Israel, China, is, uh, Japan, all over the place, Connecticut. <laughs> Amazing, so exotic. People were so keen to learn about the model, to understand what the future of food could be, to engage in building a better system, a more just, equitable, and sustainable food system. And it started here. And it is very true that these TEDx, TEDx events are a connective tissue 
that connect the folks in this room to the minds and hearts of people around the world. It's incredibly powerful, and I'm so grateful to be a very small part of it. Thank you so much.